Joining us now, a man who fought successfully for free and fair internet and free speech and a massive uh, increase in 5G spectrum, which is going to be very, very important during the Trump administration. My great pal, former FCC chairman, uh, Ajit Pai. Ajit, great to see you. Let me just, uh, quick thought on this, um, this business censorship, um, Section 230, which would reduce the liability shield, and antitrust cases from DOG, DOJ and presumably the Federal Trade Commission. Um, what do you make of all this? It's very interesting. Over the last several years, what we have seen is policymakers and regulators looking at all of the tools in the toolbox from a policy perspective to address what they consider to be potentially any competitive conduct or conduct that is not necessarily in favor of a free and open Internet. And so that's why you see uh, the attorney general designate Merrick Garland getting questions about, will you persist in the antitrust case against some of these tech companies? You see company, uh, lawmakers talking about revising Section 230. You see some of the agencies like the Federal Trade Commission considering what constitutes an unfair and deceptive trade practice. And I think it springs from this concern, a bipartisan concern, it seems now in Washington, that these companies have a lot of power and they are able to decide what consumers see and don't see. And when there's no transparency, which there isn't right now, there's no requirement for them to be transparent, I think that invokes a lot of questions in the minds of policymakers and regulators. So, Ajit, Ajit, you spent four years in that arena. Um, just quickly, these big tech companies uh, spent a fortune on Democratic candidates. Is that going to really matter in your judgment? Uh, it obviously depends on the particular agency and a person who's leading that agency. Based on the questions and answers that I heard from the attorney general designate, I have confidence that he will render an independent judgment. I do hope that he will conduct this investigation, if he obviously chooses to persist in it, uh, will conduct it very fairly. Look at the facts, look at the law, and render a decision free from any political influence. That's exactly what is needed, regardless of who's in charge, what party affiliation they might have. And the Justice Department, of course, when it comes to antitrust cases, should exemplify that. Yeah, I think you're right. There's more integrity to that process than a lot of people understand. Um, Ajit, you know I can't help myself. You and I work together and muscled through a pretty good 5G spectrum sales program to, try to try to keep America in the lead. Uh, we had the backing of President Trump. Whenever something was um, ambiguous, I'd haul you into the Oval. We'd have a nice conversation, and you and I almost invariably won, which is cool. Now, let me just state, this 5G business, please, uh, to my viewers, um, this is not boring. This is very important. It will speed up the entire Internet process. It would also protect our security. Uh, and that's very important against China. Ajit, first of all, is China really beating us in 5G, as so many people say? No, they are not. If you look at just the raw facts, the objective facts, the FCC over the last four years freed up a huge amount of spectrum for 5G, along with the collaboration with, of course, the White House National Economic Council. So thank you for your support of our efforts against a lot of short-sighted opposition at the FCC and in Capitol Hill in many cases. Moreover, in terms of wireless infrastructure, over our four years, we saw 87,000 cell sites deployed compared to 7,000 in the four years before that. So a massive increase in infrastructure. Huge influx in CapEx spent on fiber, which is necessary for 5G traffic to be carried into the core of the network. And we see companies spending a lot of money on spectrum assets and infrastructure to build state-of-the-art 5G networks. And so I'm confident that notwithstanding the headlines, many of which are politically motivated, if you look at the objective facts, the U.S. is leading in 5G and we are poised to lead well into the future so long as the FCC, the White House and other agencies keep the pedal to the metal. Well, that's the thing. President Trump and you and I, we all wanted a free enterprise approach. A free... That's right. And you wrestled Defense Department. This is very heroic. You should get a Medal of Freedom someday. They actually are going to sell, as I recall, uh, 100 uh, megahertz of uh, mid-band spectrum, which will get out into the rural areas, among other things. And just the last point for the mix, get your take. We put a lot of export controls on uh, sensitive technology, and we're basically keeping Huawei out of the U.S. So... What would you be doing now? What's the next step? What do you want the Bidens to do here? Well, when I was in office, we put in place the steps that are necessary for the FCC under the Biden administration to hold two critical mid-band spectrum auctions this year. That 3.4 gigahertz spectrum that you just mentioned that the Department of Defense has some equities on, and also the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum. This mid-band spectrum, as it's called, is critical 
for promoting American leadership in 5G. We also took very aggressive action on the security front, for example, banning companies from using SEC funds to spend it on equipment or services coming from Huawei or CTE. I also personally invested myself in making sure that our international counterparts had a risk-based framework that would prevent insecure equipment like that from Huawei and CTE getting into their networks. And so I hope that this is not something that is a partisan issue at all. We need the FCC, Congress, everybody in this current administration to focus on 5G, both the uh, spectrum assets as well as the security issue. And if they do that, America will be poised to lead well into the future. And Ajit, you know, last one, we made some progress on the international front. We had a lot of help from national security, Robert O'Brien uh, and yeah. Mike Pompeo at State. And you got what, Japan, Australia, India, keep it Huawei out. I think Britain and the UK turned against Huawei. France, Spain, I mean, it looks like we're going to win that one, too. I've got to say, uh, you know, when we started doing this, Larry, as you know, a lot of, there were a lot of skeptics out there saying, oh, it's not going to work. Uh, we haven't been you know, getting a lot of results. But by the last several months, what we saw is countries and companies within those countries making a decision to embrace the very same security framework that we've been advocating. And as you mentioned, some of those countries, it's critical. That momentum is continuing, and I think it's going to go into the future, along with some of the companies, too. And they recognize that the U.S. is leading in 5G while maintaining a strong security presence. So you can have the best of both worlds. And you're you can making, lead in 5G and, you're, and secure. Have, and you're, they're going to keep making a fortune on these auctions, which is also proof of the pudding. That's the pudding. That's what the market wants. Yeah, folks, I would just say, you know, listening to Ajit Pai, who was the best of the best at the FCC, um, this 5G business is kind of a metaphor for America's technological lead, not only at home, but around the world, and for America's technological national security strength. Keep your eye on 5G, folks, and keep your eye on Huawei.